Hi, it's me. I'm Shar. Welcome again to my little animation corner. This video is part of a small series of how I usually go about animating. I've added an info card with the other videos somewhere he here? Here? <laughs> Where did they appear? Um, I've added one with a playlist of these since this is the third one. Thank you as always for the support on the previous video. Reading comments from you guys almost always leaves me with a smile on my face and some of you even send me animation tips and feedback. I want you to know that I appreciate that a lot and I think it's a gift to be given ways to improve my work that I wouldn't normally know how to approach. I'll keep striving to only get better in what I enjoy making and hopefully the outcomes are things you'll enjoy as well. Some of you guys tried out animating with references from the previous video. Thank you again for tagging me on these and for giving me permission to share these. They're on screen right now. I get pretty excited when I see the notifications for these, so thank you for trying it out. Know that the animations I make for this series is just as much practice for me as it is for you if you also plan on doing it. I learn a lot while making these. You might even see some mistakes in the time lapses actually. So I'm happy that people like watching these videos because it also gives me a way to practice on fun things to animate that I don't usually animate. Disclaimer again, I'm not a professional animator. I'm not in any specific industry actually. My academic field is in programming and research. I just really like animating, so feel free to take and discard at will whatever I'm doing in my process. Whatever works out best for you is, I think, the best process. As always, I'll be using Adobe Animate to make this animation, but you can choose to use any other animating software to do this too. I've had a couple requests to try OpenToons, which is a free open source animation software that I've used in the past, so I'm thinking of introducing it in a future video, probably. <laughs> If you'd like to pause the video at any point to draw on your own time, feel free to do so. Music playlists, timestamps, and relevant links are in the description below. You can also just listen to me yap if you'd like. Uh, I appreciate you coming along for the ride and I hope you have fun. I've gotten a couple comments and even an email or two about it. So today I'll play around with three types of hair movement. So our scenarios today is hair under fast winds, a slow breeze, and underwater. You can choose to do all three like I'm doing, or you can choose to do just one. It's really up to you what you prefer practicing. Playing with a character's hair is such a fun way to express their personality, their emotions, or the ambience of the environment they're in. One example I immediately think of is how Studio Ghibli shows how people are frustrated or mad when their hair frizzes up, or how characters with spiky hair usually have spikier personalities, or how shyer or straight-laced characters have their long hair straight down or pleated. Obviously, this isn't always the case, but it does help bring their personality out at first glance. Today, we'll be playing around more with ambience. The character we're drawing won't be moving, but we'll play around with their hair in a bunch of different scenarios to see what kind of effect it'll bring out. Let's start with the sketch of the head and how the hair would normally look like, so kind of like the base sketch. I'm keeping the head and the hair on separate layers for convenience. One thing about hair I always keep note of is that there is a hair line and a hair part. So I think it's important to take that into consideration when drawing hair so it's grounded in some way and so that the movement makes more sense to you when you're drawing. Now let's talk a little bit about hair physics. I think a big reason as to why hair is a bit tricky to animate is that in real life, it's constantly moving. You can imagine each strand as a little ribbon that reacts to a large number of external factors. Wind, solid objects, other little hair ribbons, even humidity. Thankfully, drawings don't have to get down to that level of realism, so instead of each hair strand being a little ribbon, we can imagine hair chunks to be bigger ribbons instead, or something like that. References matter a lot for these things. The way hair flows will be a lot more believable once you get how it reacts to wind and water. I guess think of reporters during a heavy storm or how a person's hair floats when they submerge themselves under the surface of the water for a bit. I used to take swimming classes as a kid. I, I still can't swim, by the way. And one thing I really liked doing during my downtime was to watch how my hair would cling to the top of the water as I went below its surface. I always thought it was pretty weird and pretty cool. Adobe Animate has a feature called Scenes. Not really sure of the equivalent in other software, 
but it essentially makes a new timeline while maintaining your current library for the project. If your software doesn't have a scene feature, you can just create a new file no problem. Keep your base sketch saved though. Starting off with a scene with fast winds, I decided to have three keyframes of wind going different directions. What I'm envisioning here is a monsoon with a bit of rain. Winds tend to go wild during the season, so I'll make the wind go left, right, and up before looping it back. Here are the keys I made for this section. After this, I added a few in-betweens. With how fast the winds are, actually, you don't have to place in-betweens here in my opinion, but I wanted to try it out just to see what I could make. How I went thinking about this was that the wind pulls the hair, as if grabbing it in one direction, and then kind of lets it go. My keyframes in this scenario are the hair being grabbed, and the two in-betweens after show the wind slowing down and letting it go. An additional note, by the way, keep hair length consistent. Think about what side of the head it's rooted on and how that'll affect its length. And also, don't be afraid to cover your character's face. Hair trunks tend to dishevel into separate strands, and I'm pretty sure if you've had anything longer than a clean cut, you've experienced the annoying feeling of having your hair whip at your face during a particularly strong wind. It happens. It happens a lot to me. I debated on having a short pause between frames, but I ultimately decided to make the frames really fast for this one, without pauses in between. This is how I animated hair under fast winds. On to our next scene, we'll be placing our character in a place with a slow one direction breeze. Please? A slow one direction breeze. My thought process throughout this was to think that each hair chunk resembled a cape flapping. Sorry for the sudden math mention, <laughs> but I also imagined them like sine waves. Imagining them this way works well with longer strands, but for shorter strands, I just let them flap a bit up and a bit down. It's a slow breeze, so I guess you could imagine the hair moving similar to the ebbing of waves. It kind of just pulses out and then pulses back to its original position. That's how I decided on the two keyframes. As for the in-betweens, I think I could have added a little more. I think I could have made it a little smoother, but it doesn't seem that Charlene at that time felt that way. So we have this as our animation under a slow breeze. Lastly, we'll be animating hair going underwater. This was honestly the most fun scene for me to work on. I wanted to have the water fill up, submerging the character underwater, so I started out by placing the line that represents the surface of the water and animating it to go upwards. For this, I used the shape tween on the water layer, which automatically moves the line for me, so I could ease the water in and then cut it up into frames before removing the tween altogether. So it still seems like it's animated in twos. Note that this can be done manually as well. I just thought at the time that it was easier. The hair in this case should be completely normal above the water, but it should start reacting once it goes under the water. Like I mentioned earlier, hair clings onto the surface of the water, mainly because of surface tension. Water molecules like to stick close together, so you can imagine there's a bit of resistance when there's an object with natural oils, your hair, something that repels water, coming into the water. Suddenly I'm a science channel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Once it enters though, the hair seems to float. And you might think, why is that? Water is a lot denser than air, and it's pushing you up while gravity tries to pull you down. That's kind of why it feels like everything's a lot more floaty underwater, kind of like a weightlessness. So once I've animated the hair coming into the water, I decided that it would just start slowly floating to the right after it submerges. Not a lot of keys here. I animated most of the first part straight ahead since it was reliant on where the waterline was, so I decided against pose-to-pose -pose animation like I usually do. But I did decide on what the last frame should look like and slowly in between from there. Here's what the underwater animation looks like. Stop. Quick ad break. While I'm sure you're getting some sort of insight, I, I hope, <laughs> from these animation videos I'm making, there's another platform that can jumpstart you into learning the basics of making your own animation, alongside a whole bunch of other things. That being said, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. 
I was invited to try a few classes, and funnily enough, I spotted one made by an animation industry professional I follow, Tonika Pantoya. I've followed their work online for a while, so I really wanted to try out his learning path, go from idea to finished animation as a beginner, since I've never really learned the basics formally. He's able to explain a lot of the technical aspects of animation really well, and each class is fun and digestible. I learned a lot of concepts and terminologies I wasn't aware of before, and it was also pretty funny watching him voice out his storyboards and animation. After spending just around an hour or two over the week, I was able to finish the entire class. I really like how Skillshare lets you know how long each class is because it helps me schedule properly and how there's no pressure to finish a class if it doesn't fit your schedule. You can get back to it anytime. Aside from animation though, they host a ton of other topics. I've personally dipped my toes in some other learning paths like concept art, learning after effects, and knitting. <laughs> I used to crochet as a kid, but I never got a hold of knitting properly despite having the tools, so I figured this was my sign. If you want to try starting your learning journey with Skillshare today, feel free to head to my link in the description. The first 500 people to use the link will get a one month free trial. A big and warm thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this little video. Okay, back to animating. I'll be doing something a bit different than usual for this animation. All the previous animations I've made in this series so far have been cleaned and redrawn completely, but I kind of like the raw lines I made for the sketch, which is also another way of saying I'm a little too lazy to redraw the lines. <laughs> Ouch! So for this one, I'll just be cleaning the head layer and then coloring in the hair separately so that I only have to color the head once. I'll hide the hair layer for now for better visibility. I'll also make a note to separate the hairline from the rest of the face. Um, it's better to color that in the same color as the hair to avoid random bald spots. Each scene will have the face in a different scenario, so I won't color this in yet. I'll color it in while I'm coloring the hair. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't really that satisfied with how I drew the face, but I only started feeling that way after I finished the entire thing, so I guess I'll just look at it and sigh every once in a while. It was good practice for me regardless though. Um, we live and we learn. <laughs> Now we start coloring. In order for me to color the character properly, I need to know the mood and general color of the background. This fast wind scene I'm imagining is near a foggy sea during the afternoon, so to get that through without investing completely on drawing the background up front, I make a separate layer and place the general color I want the background to be as reference. This in turn lets me know that the colors for the character should be darker and desaturated. The sun isn't out and she's standing in the rain. I want to get that across with the colors. As for the hair, since I didn't redraw or clean it up, I'll be doing something else to help me color it properly. On the head layer, I use the ink bottle tool to outline the character's overall head shape. You can also trace over your character's outline with the pencil tool, whatever works best for you. Taking this outline and pasting it onto my hair layer makes it easier for me not to paint over the character's face when I don't need to. It also helps me erase unnecessary lines that overlap onto the head layer. As for coloring the hair, there's two ways to go about it. If there are any gaps in your lines and they're generally small, you can set your fill tool to fill in small gaps. There's an option for that. I don't usually use this option because it leaves little corners uncolored sometimes, thinking that it's a gap or something, but it's a generally easy way to get things colored fast. The other way to go about it, and the way I ultimately chose to go about it, was to paint behind the lines to cover the gaps. I set my brush tool to paint behind, and it left my original lines untouched. With this and the head outline covering all gaps, I can color in my hair frames properly. Here's what the fast wind scene looks like colored. As for the slow breeze scene, I imagine the character being in a bright meadow with clear skies. I try to relay that with a background color reference in a separate layer again, and opposed to our earlier scene, the colors for this scene are a lot more saturated. Instead of a dreary place, we want our character to be in a calmer, more peaceful place. Similar to how we colored the fast wind scene, I took the head outline again and painted below the hair strokes to cover all the gaps before coloring everything in. Here's what the slow breeze scene looks like with all frames colored. 
finally, we start coloring the underwater scene. I imagine her being somewhere in the middle of the ocean during the daytime, so the water would likely take a tealish blue color to reflect the color of the sky. Light becomes scarcer as you go deeper in the water, so the blue should also be darker the farther down the character goes. I used the gradient color to show this. I looked up a couple references of people being underwater and took in a couple ideas from it color-wise. The colors take on the tint of the water, so I slide my usual colors towards green and desaturate it a little bit. Everything above water, in this case, the top of the head, should remain its original color. Then, I just take the same coloring process we used with the previous two scenes, and both scenes should be colored. Here's what the underwater scene looks like. I'm gonna try to put a bit more effort into the backgrounds in this video. They're definitely a weak spot for me that I should put more practice in, so let's try out making a simple background for each. For the fast wind scene, I looked up piers. I thought it would be pretty cool if the character was standing on a pier in front of a lake or sea or something. Looking at some pictures online, I also decided that it would be nice to have mountains and maybe a bit of fog somewhere on the horizon. I place these in, and selecting the frames they're on, I decide to apply a blur filter. I want to say that I put in these blur filters for depth, but most of the time I actually put these in so nobody notices the details I miss out on or how scrunkly I often draw my backgrounds. I draw in the pier too, and give it a lighter blur effect. I want the scene to have a bit of rain as well. In order to do this, I create a completely separate looping rain layer in front of and behind the character. I blur the raindrops behind the character, but I leave the ones in front untouched. To give a bit of movement to the background, I also make the fog by the mountains move a little bit. I usually do post-processing and compositing in Adobe Premiere for the colors and stuff, but for this video, I'll do everything in Animate. I place a semi-transparent box on top of everything with a blue tint, and on its frame options, I change the blend layer to multiply. This helps darken the colors a bit with the blue tint while still letting the original colors pop. And that does it for the fast wind scene. Here's what it looks like completed. For the slow breeze scene, I looked up a lot of images of meadows and kind of just went wild with it. I put in a gradient for the clear sky, added in the plains, and doodled in some grass and wildflowers. Behind these, I placed in some trees and some mountains and blurred them according to the distance from the viewer. Similar to the fast wind scene, I placed another box on top of everything with a brighter yellow tint to make the scene warmer. I used the light and blend mode for this one. And that should do it for the slow breeze scene. Here's the final output. For the underwater scene, I start by actually drawing the water line. Water isn't usually a straight line when it moves, so I draw over the line all squiggly like normal. I also place some other lines to show that the water is in waves, and I add in a couple bubbles from the character's nose and mouth to the surface, since the character is submerging underwater and releasing oxygen that has to go up. After finishing that up, I color in the sky. Just a simple sky blue color. For the effects on this one, I want it to be bright while the sky is still in view, but very quickly darker as the character submerges further and further underwater. For this, I started out with a bright yellow box with an overlay blend layer type, and I shape tweened it to be a darker blue box, still on an overlay blend layer type, but with its brightness decreasing. I end the tween with changing the colors back to a dark yellow. If you've noticed, I really like playing around with shape tweens. It takes whatever object you place in your frame and turns it into whatever your last frame is. So it only works on single objects, and it's a lot less versatile than motion tweening, but it's quicker to implement and does the job if you're just working on one thing, like a box. We finish the whole thing. Uh, here's the underwater scene. And here's all three scenes exported together. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on making it this far. Whether you've tried it or not, I'm happy you stuck around. Again, if at any point you decide to animate with me and end up finishing a practice, please feel free to tag me on social media so that I can see what you've made. I love seeing people's animated work, and it feels really nice to see a small community practice on something together. 
If you have any feedback or suggestions on what I should animate next, let me know in the comments below. I read and appreciate most of the comments you guys leave on my videos, even the ones that just drop by to say hi. My coffee and YouTube lasagna members are now on screen. Thank you so much for the support on the little video projects I make. You make me feel as warm as I feel when I eat lasagna. Why did I write this? <laughs> if, if you'd like to support me as well, feel free to check out my coffee page in the description for memberships or join my YouTube memberships. I drop in some work in progress animations in both channels from time to time, and I started making and uploading monthly animated wallpapers that you guys get to suggest on. A warm thank you again for watching, and to Skillshare as well for sponsoring this video. For this video's game mention, I just want to say that I've been playing a lot of Helldivers too. <laughs> it's really good. I just wish the servers were a little less laggy, but I guess that's kind of what happens when you have 250,000 players in game at all times. If you see me in there, please be nice and reinforce me. Thank you. That's all. Have a great day. Bye.